Today we are reviewing the M. Night Shyamalan movie Trap, so stay tuned for our thoughts on this new release. Welcome to Horror Movie Talk. I'm Sydney Lee, the unintelligent woman. And with me are the slightly smarter men, Bryce Hansen and Max Allen. We are a silly, goofy, but very serious horror movie review podcast. New theatrical releases always get priority, but we also review older horror movies, both good and horrible. Make sure you rate, review, subscribe on iTunes, full vid video available on YouTube. Don't be a square. Make sure to share. Also, check out patreon.com slash horror movie talk, the equivalent of the adult section at your video rental store. And of course, if you want to add your pee to the community pool, go to horrormovietalk.com or call 682-253-4468 and leave us a voicemail. You know, Sydney, for the record, I don't think that you're unintelligent. I think that you're very intelligent. It's just other people who listen to you talk think you're unintelligent. <laughs> thank right, you right. we really appreciate it we just had to make that clear i mm -hmm. am smart guys i'm smart I i'm smart <laughs> i'm smart come on <laughs> well we've got a great show today we're gonna be reviewing trap we'll start out by giving a brief review and our score for the movie we score on a scale of one to ten after we give our score we'll get into spoilers and take a deeper dive into what we liked and hated about the film and later we'll be playing Trap the Game, which... Uh, it's a trap! <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> That's so loud. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. I'll turn it which down. Which is just a game that's basically me saying, you're in this movie and you're this character. How would you escape? Um, yeah. Whatever. Cool. <laughs> now, now it's, it's like really way too quiet. quiet. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can even hear it there. It's a trap. It's a How about now? <laughs> it's a trap! Bryce! <laughs> what? He's blasting our ears. Sorry. All right. There's head no in between. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so reckless when I know it's not my episode to edit. I'm like, Thank you. <laughs> Good luck setting levels, losers. Well, I really appreciate that because I have to edit it right after we record because I'm going mm. away this week. <laughs> week so. oh yeah. yeah you're coming Thank to my you. neck of the woods we're gonna hang out i am yay i'm so excited bryce um, there's still time to book a ticket i know yeah come on my wife is going on a camping trip with my son so i gotta be here well bring your kids sydney <laughs> <laughs> i'm bringing Don't my kid me into it. max is bringing his kid yeah well it's not a 13 hour drive for him that's true you <laughs> could fly i can't fl that's expensive okay whatever three tickets that's true that's fucking true. idaho thanks <laughs> all right just stop making whatever excuses. we'll talk about it more later we know whatever. you don't want to come we'll yell at I, you in the after you're right i do not want to come <laughs> <laughs> okay whatever Whatever. I haven't seen you in two years. I but would that's like fine. to see you guys. I don't want to come to Idaho. So we have to come to you every time we want to see you? Yeah, of course. You don't want to come to Mass? You don't want to come to the East Coast? You don't want to uh, live it up in the Atlantic? Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. I was I was trying I like to think my... of draw drawings to get you to come to Idaho, but I couldn't think of a single one. <laughs> 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 You ever been to Burley? 
<laughs> all right. All right. Um, so again, we're doing the new M night movie trap. It can be found in theaters now. Um, trap is a movie that follows Cooper. Uh, <laughs> I can barely hear that. <laughs> I'm going to throw this whole episode away. Um, mm. <laughs> trap is a movie that follows Cooper, a seemingly normal dad who takes his daughter Riley to her favorite artist concert. Once there, Cooper is told that the whole concert is a trap to catch a serial killer who is colloquially called the butcher plot twist, but not a plot. <laughs> Okay. Um, <laughs> plot twist, but not a plot twist because it is given in the trailer, is that Cooper is the butcher and he needs to find a way to escape the heavily guarded arena without getting caught. My review is that I was very excited for this movie. I thought the trailer looked awesome and M. Night has some good hits. The visits, the visit signs, obviously the sixth sense. After about 15 minutes of pure concert, I was completely checked out. This movie is boring. It's unfulfilling. The trailer gives away most of the interesting plot. Even though a serial killer trying not to get caught while surrounded by SWAT teams and the FBI is really high stakes, the movie doesn't make that apparent whatsoever. The classic ending twist that M. Night always does falls flat in this one, and at that point, I was honestly just waiting for it to be over. Josh Hartnett is an impeccable actor, but with this crappy script, he didn't have much to work with, and most of the other actors are not up to his caliber. I didn't care much for the characters, and overall, it was just boring, a complete drag. The only character that was redeemable was the vendor played by Jonathan Langdon, his performance solidified by the fun post credit scene. And when Josh Hartnett took his shirt off, it gained a point back in my book. I can see this getting mixed reviews like most of M. Night's films, and I am a part of the Dislike Club, and I'm giving it a 3 out of 10. Well, that is incredibly Pretty. low for this, I think. Yeah. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think, Max? Yeah. Um... I think the only trap was getting me to sit in the theater and watch this movie. Um, no, I actually, I actually <laughs> liked it. Um, I had fun. It reminded me of. De have you guys watched Dexter? <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. It had like huge Dexter vibes. Um, including the name of the serial in killer. Including the name of the serial killer, the butcher. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. It, it wasn't like incredible. It was just a lot of fun. Uh, I also went with. Um, my siblings and my wife, which is like something I never do. So it kind of added to the fun. Um, there's not much really to do when you're just in an arena the entire time. Um, but I, I think they made it work. Like there was some interesting parts. Um, I think the, the one thing I was thinking was um, because for like the thir first third of the movie, the protagonist is the killer, right? Like, He's the guy you're rooting for. And that kind of switches later. But I was just thinking, like, do we really value being a good dad over being a being a killer? Like, it's it's more important that you are a good dad than not killing people. Does that make sense? Like, that's <laughs> we're like rooting for this guy, even though he's a killer, because he's like cute with his daughter. And I like that. I think it's funny. <laughs> So I'm going to give yeah, it a, a I mean, seven. I liked it. Wow. wow. Holy wow. shit. Wow. It's interesting um, because I like when I went on Letterboxd after watching it, I was like logged in as like a one and a half out of five, which is a three out of ten. And I was looking through the reviews and people were giving it five out of five stars. And I was like, oh, my goodness. So I guess you're a part of that club. I yeah. mean, not a ten out of ten, but yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, to me, this is such a mid movie. Um, like, it was fun. It is entertaining, uh, but there's just nothing there other than the premise, and that's kind of M Night's mo, which is like a great idea and nothing else. <laughs> like <laughs> everything in the movie is determined by the plot like that's the the it's very much um suffering uh, the and then this happened and then this happened and then this happened syndrome where nothing feels inevitable you're just waiting for the payoff on the setup which is like is he gonna get away yeah he gets away but wait <laughs> now is he gonna get away Yes, yes, he gets away. He's kind of like wait. John Wick in this movie a little bit at times. Like he's just 
impossible to stop. Yeah, I mean that's that's the thing. It's like it's so dependent on the the plot and like tr- the next thing happening and figuring out like okay, what is this going to tell us? Or like, you know, is he going to figure this out? And it's so dependent on that, that, um, you know, it starts not making sense in reality. It's like, well, wait a minute. How many times would you leave your seat? Or how many times (laughs) would a daughter leave her seat in a concert to check up on her dad? And it's like, well, the answer not is that much, zero. but it has to happen in this movie because, because yeah, I mean, it has to happen in the movie because otherwise there's nothing else in the movie. You have to have some kind of f- false interaction to drive the plot forward. Um, and so stuff like character development or backstory or, you know stakes other than what is what is explicitly stated in the setup don't exist like there's no the stakes are is he going to get caught that's it that's it for the entire movie um and everyone else in the movie there's no stakes Mm -hmm. (laughs) like you don't you don't care you know um so yeah i mean uh, that's not to say like it wasn't fun. And Josh Hartnett is absolutely the best part of the movie. He, he does a great job acting and pulling off like the, the total dad vibes, um, like a very like needy, um, you know, it's almost, I was almost surprised that he was still married. Like it, the vibes that put off was very much like, divorcee mm-hmm. um dad uh very desperate and and uh and fake and trying to help his kids but like max said like he's a great dad i mean that's they make a huge point of just he is genuinely just a good father and cares for his daughter and and uh just wants to do nice things for her. and <laughs> which isn't ever really offset by any significant details of him as a killer we we barely see any dark side to him except towards the end i f- and i think they went a little it overboard made it so with much the, more interesting the dark side at the end it, like they kind of like tacked yeah. that on yeah it wasn't very fleshed out it was just kind of like oh yeah he really is evil and now we're gonna show you in the last 10 minutes of the movie but up until that he was kind of just a goofy guy with like you know a guy in his basement <laughs> I yeah, I mean, all, all, all you get is like, yeah, there's a guy in his basement that's going to die or and that he we're giving a lot of spoilers away people. before spoilers, by the way. It's not well, even it's I mean, not. These is... are in the trailer like this was in the trailer, like the the guy on his phone, like in the basement, like that was in I the guess trailer. that's true. You're right. And that that's the thing about the movie is that, you know, that he's the killer when you start watching it, because if you saw the trailer, like we've seen a million times because we go to the movies all the time to see horror movies. So we see this trailer all the time and it's like, it's given away. And of course there's like another twist kind of like, it's not really like, like when I think about the visit, like as an M night movie, that twist is amazing. You do not expect that. that. You do. That is such a good movie. I can watch it a million times knowing the twist and still like, it's still so good. Um, and is there like, a twist in this movie? I'm trying. I'm not remembering a twist. Kind, yeah, like there. We'll get into it in spoilers, but like okay. there is like a a twist at the end, but um, it's not really like the twist could have been that he is the butcher, and we could have just had like this guy being like nervous and weird, and then you find out later that he is the killer. Like I would have liked if mm-hmm. it was like a who done it. Like, you know, focusing on other guys or people at the concert and being like, oh, who's the killer? You when, know? when we got there, my wife is like the the twist is going to be that the dad is protecting the daughter and the daughter's the butcher the whole time. And I was like, that is the most insane idea I've ever heard. 
I thought it was going to be his wife or something. I thought someone else was the butcher in his family. Like, honestly, your wife's like not far off. Like, I thought that would have been cooler. Like, I thought that would have been like, oh, my God, that's crazy. Or like maybe Lady Raven was the butcher. But no, no, he is the killer the whole time. And you just kind of hear Mm -hmm. about stuff that he's done. And it's really just like inconsequential, honestly. Like, I don't it doesn't really matter. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's it's all yeah i mean honestly there's only really one thing going on it's it's how is he gonna escape and is he gonna get caught yeah like and i can't think i honestly can't think of any other plot point bryce i feel like i need to convince you to raise your score to a six because you say that it's like middle of the road but you also say you had fun so like I haven't given my score yet. You said, um, oh, well, I guess I assumed you were giving it a five because you said middle of the road or. No, I'm giving yeah. it a four. It's worse a than middle four? of the road because there's nothing. It's like it, there's just nothing there. Um, yeah, it's it's annoying, especially annoying. The, uh, where it really gets a point taken off from the five is it drags on oh so much towards it the does. end. It's like, Jesus, do we need another 20 minutes of this? Seriously? Mm -hmm. And it's so funny Um, because when I was reading reviews of this, it was like, oh, my whole theater started laughing when this happened. Like people were so excited. Everyone in my theater was completely silent the entire movie. And that shows that every single one of those people did not like it. And like when... (laughs) I, I went with my boyfriend and we walked out and I was like, that sucked. And he was like halfway, halfway through the movie. He looked at me and he was like, this movie sucks. And I was like, I know. And he was just like, Fuck. like, and I was like, I have to sit here. I have to watch it. Like, I, we can't leave. Um, and like, I'm bewildered. Everyone, I, this immediately is my imaginary. When the movie well, ended, here, here's, here's <laughs> yeah, this is your imaginary. <laughs> this is Max's imaginary. Here's, Here's a, I I have to read this. I was sitting outside the theater. Like I was, I was like looking at other movie times and I was going to, I was going to call my wife. But while I was sitting on a bench, the uh, couple that was in their sixties definitely was walking out of the trap theater. And the woman in her sixties said, (laughs) that was amazing <laughs> that was twisty turny <laughs> they usually do twisty turny but that was really twisty turny i love okay. that She's it a wasn't though like that uh, if i maybe she didn't see the trailer and they just went to go see it um maybe but i i don't know but i the just point is max agrees with the 60 year old woman <laughs> that was great that was, that was so <laughs> funny <laughs> That definitely has the same movie taste as my mother. Oh, that's so funny. I I just, like, I don't know. I had fun with it. And I, like, the criticisms you give, I agree with. Like, it did drag on. There's not a ton happening. Um, but I, I felt like uh, it was interesting. I don't know. It was interesting to see if he was going to get caught or not. And then by the end, you're kind of like, well, he's not going to get caught because he's escaped, like, six times. But... Um, for most of it, you're like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe you will get caught. Well, I mean, that's the thing about M. Night Shyamalan is that he is a very capable director. Like, like you, of course, even, even like with limited resources and with limited, like material to work with for with this, from the script that he wrote, um, he's able to pace it really well. And like, tell a story visually and and do all this stuff he's really exceptionally well at that like and i think he's gotten better you know over time or at least maintained the the high quality that he had in early in his career the the thing that fell off the most is just the writing Mm. like the writing in yeah the writing movies has just gotten so much worse and so much less interesting (coughs) um, and way more on the nose um see but like it's like this movie, I don't, I didn't like it, but I did like old, which is like really interesting. Cause like I watched old with my friends and most of them were like, that sucked. And I was like, I like this movie. Right. Like I like no, your this. Like, right. this is, no, old I is thought it was fun. fun. Old is, so old is fun. fun. Old is fun. And I felt like the stakes were higher because of the, the premise, but like the in this movie, 
yeah, it's a beach that makes you old. Like, what are you going to do? Like, what are you going to do, guys? It's, so, it's, it's scary. You're getting old and you can't get out. Um, there's an electromagnetic field. Um, but like I this movie just like I, I know the stakes were high. Like it sounds like, wow, yeah, a serial killer. He's going to get caught. It just I never thought he was going to get caught. Like he just was so good at just being like, well, I can subvert this and I can avoid this and I can I can steal this key card. And I was just like, OK, I mean, yeah, okay. he's like, not going to get here's caught. The, here's the thing. Well, let's talk in the spoiler section about yeah. this, but let's brainstorm the. The bits that could have been done in this movie. Yeah, to we make should it do more that. Interesting. We should do that. Because like. If you're sitting there thinking like, huh, from that trailer, I bet this stuff happens in that movie. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Nothing. What you're thinking of happens does not happen. Um, and yeah, I think, uh, again, to, to finish my point, M. Night Shyamalan, his writing has suffered. And in movies previous to this, it's more a parent because the premise of those movies requires so much exposition that most of the dialogue is exposition which makes like the acting bad and makes it very ham-handed overall this one has a very simple premise and gimmick that requires basically no exposition like you the whole exposition is given by the vendor in like 10 seconds yeah right so the there's i mean everything you need to know is in in the trailer so there's not a lot of material for the characters to give exposition and explain and have these reveals of this is what's actually happening. And here's the solution to the mystery. And here, here's who this person is like, it <clears throat> is just what it is. And so you're left with characters that don't really have a lot to work with in terms of exposition. So it's not, he doesn't pick up the slack with like, character development yeah. or like backstory or f emotion it's which it's like really there. hard to do that when you're at a concert because you're not talking that much like you are like you're just at a concert and that's <laughs> that's like yeah. what this movie suffers from is like you're just at a fucking concert and his daughter the whole time is just so excited and she's singing the songs and that's basically everything that she does in the movie which is fine but like right. I don't know. It just it's it yeah. suffers a lot. You it know suffers what? a lot. I think I realized why I like this movie because okay. it has Josh the Hartnett's abs. Yes, of course. Yeah. Um, and his pecs. Um, mm -hmm. but the 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 dad daughter relationship it's just hit me in the feels lately. I think I I don't mm -hmm. know. I my well. daughter. I came home from work the other day and she smiled at me so big. So Stop. it's just, it's hitting That's me so in the cute. heart and I like it. <laughs> yeah, it changes. Definitely. You're and you know, buckle up Max, because <laughs> once your daughter gets older from, from the beach that makes you old from um. age five to <laughs> whenever uh -huh. every movie you see with a father daughter relationship, where they actually communicate is uh, it is going to hit you hard or basically any any child in a movie changes. I mean, the way I watched The Exorcist when I was young versus how I watch it now is so much different. Like it hits so much harder now as a parent than it did when I was a kid, which it had already hit hard. So. But that's no excuse for liking a shitty movie. <laughs> hey, <laughs> so <laughs> it's a pretty good movie, I think. All right. Well, let's talk about it more on the spoilers and we can yeah. Uh, yeah. figure out what why Max like this. No, we've watched some actual poop fests with literal poop. We and, have. Uh, this is not that. This is not the lowest score I've given this year, so. 
Not even close. You know, I think I've given like two ones this year. I've I've given a one to imaginary. <laughs> All right. If you're listening to these commercials, you should yet know already that you don't have to. Go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash horror movie talk. Sign up for any one of our lovely, lovely tiers and get bonus content, get our after pods, get early access to episodes. Um, there's so many wonderful things going on over there. Um, obviously we have our HMT shop at horrormovietalk.com. Um, we have our link tree and all of our bios so you can listen to us. You can go to the shop, you can sign up for Patreon all on one link. Um, and of course I would be remiss to forget checking out our resident artist, Dustin Goebel. He's a professional artist who fucks hard. He also takes commissions for artwork from HMT fans. Contact him at D-G-O-E-B-E-L-0-0 on Instagram and make your artistic dreams come true. Tell him that we sent you. And again, our phone number is 682-253-4468. Leave us a voicemail, um, compliments, complaints, whatever, whatever you want. Um, I think I need someone new to profess their love to me on the podcast. So if you want to do that. Um, <laughs> and of I don't course, know if you thanks need that. for listening. <laughs> I'm... I'm Oh, has something happened with uh, your love life situation we need to talk about? No, no. I'm just saying that she CJ has given up. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I went. I saw this movie with my boyfriend two days ago. Um, All right. That means nothing. <laughs> uh-huh. um, well, thank you for listening. And let's now get she's into, nervous. Let's get into spoilers. <laughs> Fuck. My cat's here. Mama, stop it! She's trying to eat my microphone. Aww. Is your boyfriend going to be mad at me when I meet him in a few days because I keep making jokes about you guys breaking up? <laughs> I don't think he knows that you've been doing okay, that. Okay, good. Let's so. keep that a secret because that's really awkward. I'm, <laughs> he I'm hasn't so been curious. listening. I'm so curious. Did he watch the the episode, like actually watch or listen to the episode with the voicemail on it? No. <laughs> I, I rewatched I, that and I was like, oh no. I know. When I was <laughs> editing it, I was like, nah. um, no, I, I mean, he doesn't really, he hasn't been listening to the episodes. I don't think he usually tells me when he does, but um, he's unemployed now and doesn't have time to do anything. Um, but he's unemployed. Sleep. So he doesn't have time to listen to podcasts. That doesn't sound right. That's what, that's what he tells me. Um, oh, okay. Whatever. Um, <laughs> um, you know, at, at a certain, I kind of respect that because, you know, you, it's a good time to remove distraction so you hold yourself accountable. I'm gonna, yeah, and not be doing computer games while I'm unemployed. Well, this is your very first day of being unemployed. That's true. That is true. Yesterday was my official last Yay! day at Ability. Congratulations. Um, oh man, I've got so much to talk about on the on the afterpod. But I've started a Slack um account with a couple of the other people that were laid off or Ability laid unfiltered. Laid off. Yeah, it's <laughs> the, the I call it Obilities in Exile. Um and it's like you know how they talk have that meme of children, you know, it being made illegal in the twenties that children couldn't work in mines anymore, and now they're all on Minecraft. Yeah, they yearn and for the, the mines. The joke is the children <laughs> yearn for the mines. Like, I I feel like we yearn for tasks because we. <laughs> I I made a slack and then Leah made an asana uh prod it's a, which is a project manager tracker thing for tracking tasks i'm like wow we're really pathetic <laughs> every time you it's watch a movie like for a, the podcast you just track it on the it's been a couple days and already i'm aimless <laughs> i need i need a customer success manager to ask me what i'm doing um but uh, so 
yeah anyways. i have a question uh for you guys about this movie because i asked this before we watched it and i feel like okay so i asked you guys if this was a horror movie or not and you were like uh, of course it is duh and then i watched it and i'm like yeah i don't know <laughs> yeah i don't know if it is i mean yeah, like it's... i feel like all of m night's movies are like horror movies but like some of them are like like i wasn't scared of old like i was scared of the visit you know it's like it really depends on like the plot the premise that he's putting out but like this one should be a horror movie it should be like this premise it's nerve-wracking it's scary let's see this motherfucker kill someone and then we don't yeah. and then we don't like he's a serial so, killer uh, i don't see him do anything <laughs> right yeah in in imdb it's classified <laughs> as a crime horror mystery and let's see what fandango says I like those horror Twitter accounts are like horror summer and they put this one on there. I so. feel like if you have like four different categories this movie fits into and one of them is horror, it's that's pretty borderline. I mean, that's my case for saying that Alien isn't horror. Like I view it as sci fi. That is scary, though. It's a sci fi horror. Come on. That's it's a scary movie. Most sci-fis uh, are horror. Like, you watch 2001 A Space Odyssey and you're not scared of Hal? Come on. That shit's right. scary. Yeah, and Fandango classifies Strap as a horror, too. But, yeah, there's nothing... There's no real horror elements. So yeah. here's here are some of the things... Let's talk about the bits that you would assume would be in this movie. Any killing whatsoever. <laughs> like, any. Like, police. Number one. There is... The kill count on this movie is zero. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No one. Besides the people that he killed before. He's yeah, killed 10 never... people. He's killed 10 people, they said, at some point. And he chops him up. And you see like a, you see a police photo. And the most we see photo. is, yeah, we see a crime scene photo of them under a tarp. We don't even actually see yeah. any explicit imagery of his. And so this is PG-13. But even in a PG-13 movie, you can you have, have deaths yeah, have death. and yes. murder. Yes. He injures people. He injures like four or five people throughout the movie. Four? Right. Really? So, well, I thought it was, I only count one. He knocks the yeah. girl down the stairs. He oh, okay. blows up the fryer in that girl's face. Uh -huh. um, he tackles a guard and like gouges his eyes out. Oh, right. And I then, forgot about that. That might be it, okay, actually. Yeah. That might be the three. I think that's it. I yeah, that's it. and the only one that's even close to being horrific is the Friar mm -hmm. accident, which is shown in the trailer. There's just nothing. See, that's the thing. There, There's no, you would assume that someone that's a serial killer that has a thirst for murdering people in a enclosed space under pressure would be forced to kill people to try to get outside yeah i was thinking I he was gonna kill like the main fbi lady or like some some swat team members or like some people that worked at the concert or maybe even lady raven <laughs> like it just doesn't happen and if he did kill them it would probably make his life easier because then he wouldn't get have got caught like it's I, I thought he was definitely gonna kill lady raven when he brings her into that room and tells her basically i'm the killer like I was like, oh, oh he's gonna God. kill her, and then it's gonna be like a big distraction because everyone's gonna be confused about her dying and freaking out, and then he'll escape, which I think would have probably been a better move for him. Yeah, I am so angry about that scene because everything that happens, like I keep saying that everything is inconsequential. So like he's at this concert and he thinks he's gonna get caught when in reality no one is onto him. Not a single person is on to him at all. They are interviewing every man in the in the place that is in their 30s or 40s. And if they interviewed him, he probably would have been fine because he seems like he's a good liar. And then mm -hmm. he's literally not going to get caught. He's it's literally 
100, 99% sure he's not going to get caught. He just doesn't want to go through the police questioning to get out of the concert. And so he gives himself up to Lady Raven. Stupidest, dumbest move ever. He was not going to get caught. In my opinion, he was going to be fine. He was going to be fine. Yeah. At that I point. Mean, honestly, the only thing they had on him was his age. And the tattoo. And the tattoo. And his car. In in a concert full of preteens and, you know, women, I can't believe that he didn't just steal some makeup and put it on his wrist mm. and just be like, okay, I'm fine. I like They're not gonna the part where they, they say... Put, he put the bracelet on. The FBI agents are talking and they're like, there's 21... Or what do they say? There's 21,000 people here or something like that. 3,000 of them are adult males. And I was like, wow, that's actually a pretty small percentage of of men there. That's a lot of women. Right. D oh, sorry. Before we move on, is there any other, like, w what other interesting scenes could be in this movie? I mean, other than deaths, like, even stuff like, climbing into the scaffolding above or doing interesting stuff behind the scenes like once they get the behind the backstage passes i was expecting so much to happen backstage he just stood and him there to be so conniving and yeah he just stood there they did kind of i thought he was gonna go for a while he, he was gonna go i thought he was gonna go in the hole in the ground that that rust came uh -huh. out of but no he didn't and why didn't he? He could have just went down there. His daughter probably wouldn't even fucking notice because she he was gone the whole concert anyways. So he could have right. just escaped and then called his daughter and been like, hey, I'm at the car. I got lost. Like, I, I don't know. It would have been easy. It was easy for him to get out. I don't think it was so right. hard. I really don't even, think it would have been so hard for him to get out and go home. It just doesn't make sense. Another obvious scene would have been him actually being confronted by the police. Mm-hmm. Yeah, He's I never confronted loved. by the police. I would have he loved the has... interrogation. See what he came up with. Yeah, or or even just figure out how he would get out of that situation if the police came and selected him to talk. Or if he tried to leave through a door and outside there was a cop. Like, I guess the the only the closest we got to that was when he got to the roof and <laughs> and then out of the shadows, a couple SWAT members come out and are asking him who he is. And and he had already figured out that he needed to be in disguise. So he's so I guess they have that. But there could have been like two or three more of those scenes of him interacting with police, even just tangentially to raise the stakes. But those SWAT members don't. are so dumb, by the way, like. You're on the roof. No one's going to be on the roof. And then someone does go to the roof, fitting the description of the killer perfectly. And they're just like, uh -huh. he knows the word he's supposed to know, though. So and he has that I little card we... that we gave him. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. He's a so... killer, not a thief. <laughs> <laughs> he must yeah, work here. I... He must work here. He's not wearing the uniform at all. He just has an apron on. But um, he must work here. This middle-aged man that we're looking for a middle-aged man. That makes sense. And also, I really hated the scene where he was like he snuck into the back room and there was like a SWAT team debriefing. Why wouldn't they yell at him? Even if he did just work there, he's probably not supposed to listen in on like a SWAT team debriefing. And they were just like, he was just like, I'm just making coffee. Do you guys want donuts? You fucking pigs. But like, it's like, it's like, no, like he, they don't even, it's just so inconsequential. It's just I don't nothing know. is happening that is making me nervous I, that he's going to get caught. I kind of feel know. like that's yeah. pretty realistic though. Like you can kind of just walk into places and people don't usually question you. Yeah. If you got, if you got an employee tag, no one's going to ask you a question, especially since they're not there all the time mm -hmm. they don't know who's supposed to but, come in and out yeah how about how about the amount of police that were in this movie huh. hundreds it was 
astounding. It's like they multiply as the movie goes on. There's too many. They've got <laughs> 20 people per door of this place. It's insane. And then the premise, if you step back and think about it, makes zero sense. They're no, never mind. They they do actually explain it. But for the longest time in the movie, you you assume that they're that they are assuming that the killer's gonna be here because there's just a lot of guys there. You know? Yeah. They're just like, we got a tip off about it, but then you find out later that like there was a receipt at a right. safe house that whatever. That was stupid. It does it's stupid though. Like it's well, just stupid. I kind like- of so this is what I was confused about, and maybe you guys understood it better than I did. His wife turns him in, but not directly, right? She kind of That just was the gives- twist. That was like the twist. Okay, right? so she gives yeah. like an anonymous tip saying, I know that the butcher is going to be at the concert because I have his receipt, uh-huh. which would have been way better if she's just like, and his name is blank and you should just come to my house and get him right now. Um, right. That would have been a lot easier. But uh, for some reason, they just don't question it. They're like, OK, we'll go to the concert. And then they do this elaborate thing with so many cops they could have taken him down with like thing, five cops if they just went to his house well to that point the other thing Max, is that- i was just i i was like i just don't understand why if she didn't think he was cheating she was like it's not your style to cheat so you must be a serial killer <laughs> what like, are you fucking serious? Like, that's where your head went? Maybe he just has, like, a secret apartment that he goes to because he doesn't like you. Like, you know, like, there could just be, there could be a lot of explanations for this apartment that had nothing in it because she went inside and she saw that there was nothing of evidence in there and she planted this receipt. So why would she assume, if, if she doesn't think he's cheating, why would she be like, he's probably the butcher? What? Obviously, this is written by a man. Um, yeah. What was I going to say? Men only have three moods. Being faithful to their wife and not being weird. Cheating or killing people. And you right. fall into one That's of these true. three categories. <laughs> Which one are you, Max? I'm a faithful husband. Oh. I'm a good boy. <laughs> Good. And if ever that changes, I'll, I'll, I'll start killing people. <laughs> I mean, can't you be more than one though? Can't be faithful and um, kill people. I don't know. Maybe. Well, you. I think that's yeah, what no, this you movie can. is exploring. You can. Um, I'm just saying you can't cheat on your wife and kill people at the same time. That wouldn't make any sense. Yeah, it's too much. <laughs> that's a lot to juggle. Pick one. That is a Pick lot one. to juggle. <laughs> Where you're going to have multiple <laughs> women and kill people? That's, like, insane. <laughs> That'd be dishonest. <laughs> You'd be yeah, letting so down multiple, we... <laughs> multiple girlfriends. It's not fair. Um, well, actually, you know what? If, if you think about it, Tony Soprano, he, he, he cheated on his wife and he killed people. But well, he was spoilers still a good for the Sopranos. Oh, come on. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. He's a mob boss. All like, right. that's the whole thing. Well, now when I that. see that's him a- cheating and killing people, I'm going to be like, I saw that coming because Sydney told me. Okay. It's like the first episode. But also, I have every single Sopranos on DVD, every single episode. So mm-hmm. if you, if you want to watch them on DVD, I have them. <laughs> but do you want to run down just like the basic schedule of this movie the, the timeline it's, um it's... so much I, I wrote down so much concert the whole concert for an hour you see so much of this concert and i'm gonna be so honest i was seeing people being like these original songs and uh, lady raven is played by m night Shyamalan's daughter these original Shocker. songs are so good um no they're not no they're not these songs I are mean, basic me, pop songs <laughs> like, for me it's it's just telling how it's like yeah it, all of these songs are super convincing modern pop songs. That is to say, there's nothing there. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, they're so, they're so nothing. And like, um, there's a random Kid Cudi cameo where he's like a gay guy and that's really funny. Um, and he hits on uh, Josh Hartnett. 
Mm -hmm. that was that was funny and we have a russ cameo which is like whatever i hate russ um but like it's literally the concert for so long and it's so boring and you find out he like at one point this is how you find out he's a serial killer i guess he goes to the bathroom and checks on the guy chained up in his basement and you're like okay um uh the whole concert's a trap he gets nervous and he gets he he just gets nervous the whole time and yeah, does it's all just these a series, things. It's just a series of him checking exits. <laughs> <laughs> and making his daughter it's... run around with him or, or making his daughter stay at the seat. And then there's like a side plot where his daughter's friends are mean to her because she's in middle school. And that happens to everyone. Yeah, and which, yeah was... which is never fully developed or explained. It's just like there is some mean girls and one of the mean girls mom mom's approaches him really annoying did you get the vibe that they couldn't it. get those two actors in the same room together because uh the the way it was shot it was like she was looking directly at the camera you don't see him and then when it shows him it shows the back of her head and i was like i feel like they just they, they could not get the schedules to line up these actors never met each other <laughs> it, could have been. it is it is interesting seeing m night shooting style in this movie and one of the things that that like is impressive about M night is regardless of the critics reception of his movies, they all make money. Mm -hmm. They're all profitable and they all come in under budget on time. And that's why he gets to do whatever he wants. Plus he self finances stuff now and he just knows how ambitious he can be with his own money and and it works out fine but looking at the shot composition there's a lot of one shots a lot of close-ups where it's very apparent that this did not take that much time to shoot yeah <laughs> this did not take a lot of production hours to accomplish um probably the most difficult yeah, part so was hiring several, thousands several times of extras to come to this fake concert Right. So, yeah, I'm, I'm sure most of the budget was literally in hiring choreographers and the venue for <clears throat> a couple days and doing a full production concert. Um, and the rest of it's really cheap. But I, as far as the plot goes, it's him discovering why there's so many police trying to find exits he trying to um create distractions and then finding out that that's not going to help him and learning other exit opportunities and seeking them and then being closed in or whatever and and it's all surrounded in his daughter seeing her favorite artist and then meeting her backstage and and so the whole time you're you're just asking is he going to escape and i don't think there's any doubt that he's going to escape the venue yeah that he's going to escape the concert and that he would does. be the dumbest movie ever if he didn't if they just caught yeah. him and he um, does because like he tells lady raven he's like i'm gonna kill this guy if you don't take me in your limousine and um take us back to the car and she's like okay um I did not think she was a good actress at all. Um, could not stand her. Like, I was like, oh, my God. Like, the daughter was a much better actor than this woman. And I'm sorry to say, I just didn't, I didn't like the close-ups of her face. I was like, I just didn't. She's gorgeous, but, like, I just couldn't get into it. She was not very convincing to me. Um, and... Yeah, so Lady Raven is like, oh, why don't we actually go to your house while they're in the limo? And then Josh Hartnett starts getting nervous. She, like, steals his phone and locks herself in the bathroom and goes live on Instagram and is like, we're trying to find this man named Spencer. He's in a house with a blue door. And, like, one of her fans finds him. Um, and Josh Hartnett looks like he's going to kill her. Um, but he doesn't. And he locks his family in a room, but they escape out the window. And he's like, how would they ever do that? Which is so crazy. It's like, dude, what do you mean? Like, it's not hard to get out of a house that you live in. Like, I don't understand. Um, 
And then we think he's going to get caught, but he doesn't. And then we think he's going to get caught again, and he doesn't. And you know he's not going to get caught. Like, you just know he's not going to get caught. And then finally it's, like, revealed that his wife gave him up. And she put, like, some, like, drug in the pie, but it doesn't even make him pass out. He gets tased, like, a thousand times How and does not fall How did she put the drugs down. in the pie? Because they already ate that pie. There was two pieces left of the pie. I think what what they did was just said it was treated like powdered sugar and she just put it on a pie as she was mm. rounding the corner or something. I see. Yeah. Um, can you guys tell me if my morality is broken? Because I think and, you know, you never know what you're going to do and in, in, if the situation actually arises. But I feel like if I was Lady Raven and he's like, I'm going to press this button and kill this guy unless you take me to your limousine. I feel like I'd just be like okay like press the button we're just gonna get you and then you're never gonna be able to kill again like it's it's yeah. still a win for us <laughs> i don't know <laughs> like it's a sacrifice and it sucks but we're gonna get you i mean it's literally the trolley problem yeah yeah it's do you save the person that you have control over or do you do nothing and not save them um, um but she does save him she you know he does get saved he you that see was him. My, that was my favorite part of the movie and the most creative scene was her utilizing her fan base to solve the problem because literally it is believable if taylor swift went on her phone in live stream and just said find find the my hidden treasure here's two clues it would be found it within would happen, two minutes. Yeah, and it did. And that and that was that was definitely cool. Um and um then he he's about to like escape with Lady Raven or something. Or maybe that already happened and his family like is in front of the door or whatever. I don't know. But he, you know, the wife, the p- cops come, whatever. There's also this weird thing with like his mom that he has like an edible thing going on like which is makes no fucking sense i don't care doesn't matter um and that's the other thing that they don't don't ever explore they're like he has ocd and mommy issues and they barely touch it's like so do i or, and i don't fucking kill people like i like please. how they show him like just like <laughs> fixing a crooked painting or something and like that's all they that's need OCD. to explain that he has ocd mm-hmm that's OCD. He has to put the kickstand on the bike. It's OCD. Like it's. They don't no, show him no. like flip, flipping the lights on and off thirty two times so he doesn't stab his wife <laughs> with a pencil in the eye. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. He was not in that bathroom long enough washing his hands if he had OCD. Yeah, you know they I, should have shown him washing his hands like five times before he left. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you about some OCD, Josh Hartnett. <laughs> um, but um, he does get caught. But when he's doing the bike stand i totally caught that he was gonna take something off the bike and he Mm. gets in the he gets in the van and he takes like a metal spoke off of the bike and he undoes his handcuffs Um, and that's the end of the movie whatever he wants (laughs) i know (laughs) like no you can't fix the bike we're putting you in a in a school uh in an armored truck right now (laughs) i know and it's like what was it what's his plan when he the cops open that up he's gonna punch all them like they have guns like i don't they're gonna kill you and then you're gonna be dead like and yeah, he's like that's, so that's happy that end. he got the the cuffs off but he's still locked in a how are you gonna get out of the fucking car, <laughs> car. <laughs> um but then right when it ended like right when that happened everyone in my theater got up and then the post credit scene came up and we all were standing on the stairs and that was a good scene where where they fight like it's like oh the butcher got caught and it's the vendor guy and he's like oh fuck i helped that guy and that was that was really funny and i liked that um but that was the best part of the movie was that was that guy and that's you know unfortunate because it it was a good i was excited for this film i really was and it really let me down man Really let me down. Yeah, it, it feels like M Night is is uh, transitioning away from focusing solely on making movies and is really uh, moving over to pushing his children upon us. Like he's he's pulling a Will Smith. So his daughter as Lady Raven, and then 
the Watchers being directed by his daughter. There was a Watchers poster in this movie at one point. Mm hmm. So anyways, it's, uh, it's, it's I mean, w- what I can say about it, it is twisty turny, you know, and they do. <laughs> They normally twisty do turning. twisty turning, but this one's really twisty turning. Yeah. So I agree with that. I um, think it's fun. I I think it's got problems, but it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I think I think uh, for final recommendations, I think this is a movie that you would watch like six months after it came out when it starts <laughs> going on streaming and you watch it with your friends and you guys like smoke weed and eat pizza and you don't really pay attention. That's the kind of movie that this is to me. Yeah. All right. Um, it it is it would be fun to analyze it with friends from the standpoint of realism because there's so much of this that doesn't stand up to scrutiny. Where it's okay. Number one, if you're a teenage girl watching your absolute favorite artist on stage and your dad turns to you and says word one, you're gonna turn to him and say, "Shut up." Yep. Shut the fuck up, Dad. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't talk to me. Or actually, not even that. You will be screaming at the top of your lungs a shrieking scream, um, saying the lyrics of the song that she you won't ever be able to hear. Him. I actually um, I enjoyed watching that, like seeing how excited all the teenage girls were to just sing along to the music because uh, most of the concerts I go to are like uh, small venue metal shows. And Uh those are like a totally different vibe because everyone there, it's mostly just like dudes in their 20s kind of like nodding their head. And then it ends and they're like, that was sick. And then the band is just kind of hanging out afterwards. It's like no one's like, like, hey, you you did great. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I went to I think it was in the winter, um, like maybe February, I think Um, we went to my friend's has a coworker that's in a metal band. And so we went to like a metal show and there was probably like 20 ish people there. There were some people moshing, but we were kind of hanging back and we were like, and yeah. then we, we went outside and they were like smoking a cigarette and we were like, you, you killed it, man. And we were like, yeah. And I was like, it's cold. Let's go home. Like, <laughs> and so, yeah, but I went to Lana Del Rey in June and, um, there was a rain delay, uh, when we got there because it was an outdoor concert. It was at Fenway. Um, but, the minute Lana Del Rey went on to the minute she was done, I did not move. I was screaming and dancing. Like I would have never, I would have never ran out to go get a pretzel. Like, are you fucking joking? That's what before the concert's for. That's why you get there before the concert. Like it was, it's, it's insane. If I, if, if I was 13 and I was going to a Lana Del Rey concert with my dad and my dad was like, Hey, do you want to go out 20 times? From the concert, I'd be like, "No, you can, you can figure it out. I'm gonna stay right here. I'm going." Yeah, I'm it, was, it was bizarre. They they were treating it like a sports event and not a concert. You don't leave a concert to go to the bathroom. You don't. It's not even usually possible to to move at a concert. Yeah. If you're if you're on the floor, and if you if you left, I don't know. Maybe I'm usually in general admission. Um, it'd be weird to be seated at a show on the floor, but yeah, if you, if you left, like you're not getting back to your seat, I I assume, cause it's going to be crowded with fans. I have a yeah. really hard time getting excited at concerts, uh, n- lately. Like we went to a Laney concert, um, which I like their music a lot. Um, and like they get on stage and they're like, Salt Lake City, this is going to be the best night of your fucking life. And I'm just like. No, it's it won't be. <laughs> this is gonna be a night <laughs> of my life, and it, that's It'll be okay, fun, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's why I just don't go to concerts because I don't care enough mm-hmm. to see people live. There's like, I will say, if I have a bit of uh, elder advice, it would be have a band that you listen to absolutely everything they've ever put out, including B sides and you know, that stuff and go to that concert, go to, go to those concerts. Those are the most enjoyable. Mm-hmm. I, I can't imagine going to a concert for someone who I like their single. Yeah. You know? 
it's like I, mm. I went to a music festival last Saturday after we recorded um and it was all bands that my friends like but I don't really have the same music taste as them like they listen to a lot of indie stuff and I'm like I I don't hate it I just you know it's not in my rotation um and yeah, it was just like funny for them to be like totally singing every word and like rocking out like to like Bay Faction and Wunderbar. And I was just like, yeah, they're good. That was really good. Let's. All right. Time. You want to order food? Like, mm -hmm. let's go home. Like, <laughs> That was fun. Um, but yeah. Uh, do you want to get into the game? Let's do it. Sure. I was trying to find this clip of this. Did you ever see? It was like a month ago. It's this teen girl scream singing along to some artist and totally ruining the show. I've seen plenty of videos like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I definitely have videos it. like that in my own Snapchat. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. Let's let's go on to the game. All right. So I'm calling it Trap the Game. And um, it's inspired by when me, my sister and my dad would just be like at the mall or something. And he would be like, zombie mm -hmm. apocalypse right now. What do you do? Where do you go? what what shit are you grabbing so thank you dad for the inspiration so how likely are you to get out of these movie situations and tell me how you would do it i put a bunch on here we don't have to do all of them um so i'll start off with trap and you're cooper so what are you guys gonna do cooper's the dad right mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> okay um hmm yeah i feel like um I would get out by hiding and waiting. Like I would abandon my kid, <laughs> uh, especially if I was backstage. If I was backstage, I would just disappear, wait for like five hours and then sneak out. Well, that's a pretty good idea. Um, that would, that would be one. Um, I think um, he didn't explore the roof enough or... <laughs> the the roof thing where i thought that was the best opportunity but then all of a sudden like five more swat team members spawned in <laughs> that, that was the funnest part of the movie was you'd see two cops and be like oh well, <clears throat> you could probably get by two cops and then immediately from behind a pillar 17 more cops would walk into the frame <laughs> you're like ah shit that'd be funny um so, yeah, I don't think I'd be able to use any of the exits, but I'd either have to hide and escape later at night or something or go up in the scaffolding or some some area that um, just you wouldn't be found or or like find an exit opportunity there or leave in like a crate. That, that would be other um if you're behind the scenes, the other thing you could do, you wouldn't even have to leave your daughter necessarily. You just have to convince her, like, listen, let's just see what it's like when they're breaking down the, the stage. Oh, look, there's a giant crate, you know, with stage materials. Wouldn't it be funny if we just climbed in there and then got on our tour bus and maybe we could meet her again? But, I mean, you could just bend in your daughter and just climb into one of the crates yeah. and be wheeled off. Um, Max, what would you do? I know exactly what I would do. There's a part in the movie where Cooper, like, catches a girl who, like, faints and brings her backstage. Mm. What I would uh -huh. do is I would let her head smack against that floor. And then, then I would pick her up, make a big deal about it, and be like, we got to get this girl to the hospital. And I would rush straight to the exit in the back. And then they'd be like, whoa, 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 you can't leave. And I'd be like, this girl literally needs to go to the hospital right now. And then they would probably let me through. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a firefighter. I mean, honestly. Yeah, he's a firefighter. Yeah, so I'm Why a firefighter. Say and this girl more. needs a hospital. I need to get her there. All yeah. he has to do is say, I'm a firefighter, the cops, and they'll be like, all right, he's he's kind of one of us, sure. Yeah. They never used that. Through. They did not use yeah. that as much as they should have. Okay, good good plans, guys. Um, okay. All right, the next one is The Descent, and you're you're one of the girls, but not the one who breaks her leg. You're completely able-bodied. That's so easy. I would just never go in that cave. 
<laughs> caving looks horrifying, even in like a safe cave. Yeah, and this wasn't a safe cave. This was an uncharted no. cave. <laughs> I can't remember. Did, why couldn't they just climb out? Because there's because well, they took all the ropes from when they 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 like roped in, and then they were like, "We'll need all of our ropes," so they took the ropes off of the. And then there's like goblins. Oh, and then like yeah, the passage gets the sealed, but I mean, you could do it before the passage gets sealed. I guess it doesn't matter. I watched this um, recently. Yeah, it's a good question. I also wouldn't just. I just wouldn't go. I'd stay at the house. <laughs> the, 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 yeah, I think that one. I would definitely die. Yeah, I, don't I would think die I'd be too. Able to get get out of that one. I have zero caving <laughs> skills. Because the the number one fact is that I'd be a girl, and girls are weak. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's true. Okay. I think yeah. they were all pretty physically fit. And They're really pretty weak. Fit. Okay. Um, all right. Um, have you guys seen <laughs> yeah, Frozen? Yeah, but what do they bench? Okay, whatever. Have I seen Frozen? Have you guys yeah, seen, I've seen Frozen. But not Elsa. But not Elsa and Anna. Like the other Frozen. <laughs> then no, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, okay. Um, I guess I could just say the premise. It's... Um, it's two people get they do like a night ski and they get stuck on a ski lift that's not moving overnight. That's like Ooh. really high up and it's really yeah, I think fucking it's actually cold. Three people. Uh, three it's people. Two guys and a, and a girl. Yes, yes, you're right. Um, Based on a true story, by the way. Yeah, really scary. So you're stuck on a ski lift. It's it's nighttime. It's freezing. It's pitch black, um, and you can't really get off. <laughs> so what do you? How would you? How would you get out? Oh, and there's wolves. <laughs> wolves. That's the movie's good. It's a really good horror movie. It's scary. This one, I feel like it's better than a 50 50 chance to just jump and land in the snow. You know, mm. one guy did that though, and he landed straight on his feet and he broke his legs in the movie. Yeah, but even then. With broken legs, you could still make your way down the hill. Have you guys, n- neither of you seen this? Mm. I've seen it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, I mean, the wolves attack him. The I mean, the wolves did. is kind of attack him. But yeah. I mean, if he's got his skis, That's just kneel true. on the skis and make your way down. That's true. You'd be faster than wolves. I feel like the best, is is help on the way? Like, will help get there? No. If I, no. Not even if I no. wait overnight? No, it's, you're, you you're going to freeze to death. You're going to get you're going to freeze to death. Well, what I would do is I would not freeze to death because (laughs) I would like grab onto the top and I would do like pull ups to keep my body warm. Mm. And then once once those muscles got tired, I would put my arms down like this and I would do dips. (laughs) Yeah, that's how you you fight off hypothermia is to expend heat. (laughs) No, you're moving your body. You're keeping your blood circulating. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's it's yeah, kind of an hi- impossible situation. M- mountain climbers have never succumbed to hypothermia because they've <laughs> all they've always been moving. Haven't you seen that show? I think it's called I Shouldn't Be Alive. I don't know where to find it anymore, but it used to be on Netflix, I think. And I feel I feel like the obvious answer that I don't remember them ever trying is. If you've got three coats, you can tie them together and like oh. get low enough to where mm. you could jump down. I mean, you don't have to jump from that's the smart. seat. Like you should have that'd be really pants smart. and coats enough to get you maybe ten feet off the ground, and then you could jump. That's actually that's genius. actually so smart. That's probably they the best. That's better than that. my dips thing. Yeah, that's yeah. that's pretty good. I like that one. But anyways, right. there's an episode um, of I Shouldn't Be Alive where a a girl is a running and she breaks her leg and then is like out in the middle of nowhere overnight and she's like freezing and she does crunches to stay warm and she does crunches all night. Oh, wow. Hmm. And she lives. I guess keep your body moving. Yeah, that, that would. Maybe you're right, Max. But I think um, Bryce's idea was better. Okay. I think that I probably shouldn't have put this on here, but Cube, I don't think there's a way to get out. <laughs> well, like, you gotta be just autistic a, and really good at math. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, that was a chance that he got out, and you, you don't even know where he went. Like, you don't even know where he was when he got out, so. 
Yeah, it's, that's I, one where I would definitely die. I'd be one of the first people to die. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you get acid, something, something burned Ooh. to death, whatever. Yeah, I um, would be like, hey, guys, right. there's another cube over here. And I would jump in and just get, like, cut in half immediately. <laughs> just, like, sliced. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I would get um, cubed. Cubed, yeah. Um, so the next one is quarantine, um, and you're not infected. Mm, I could live this one. I think I could, too. Wait, like are you saying cor- why would you choose quarantine when quarantine is just a remake of wreck? Because I don't think I All don't right, think I've, snob. I don't think I've seen <laughs> wreck. I've only seen quarantine, I think. I'm not sure. They're basically the same. They are the same, except for wreck is like a little bit better. And the original. It's like okay, being like, whatever. would you survive you Rob Zombie Halloween? <laughs> why not just say you can Halloween? say wreck fine you can say wreck but i you know it's only if you speak spanish i think it's Ar- yeah. argent max if you Wait, if you choose you can do wreck you can give your answer for wreck but you have to give it in spanish <laughs> ah uh yo hablo espanol mucho uh muy bien see sí. um yeah i think quarantine that's another one where I feel like you could just hide and wait it out. Yeah, uh, probably. I, I never, I don't think hiding is a, is a utilized strategy in horror movies enough. Literally just hide in a cabinet. Or if they do I hide, it's never see... in a place that, that works, that is actually hidden. It's always just yeah. like a. I'm yeah. trying to remember how see, that movie goes. I don't see zombies ever rummaging around the cabinets or like opening up cedar boxes or anything to. To find people. They're usually just going after the people that are moving around. I feel like the biggest problem with both quarantine and wreck is everyone's fighting all the time. Like Mm -hmm. for some reason, everyone's freaking out like way too much. Everyone's fighting. No one can agree. Everyone's going off and doing their own thing and dying. Like I feel like Mm -hmm. I'm a pretty calm, rational person and I would just stay alive by keeping everyone calm, keeping everyone together and like staying in a locked room. I think that would be probably the best um, course of action. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, definitely. Um, all right, all right. Moving on. Funny games. You're one of the hostages, but it can be earlier in the movie too, Ugh. before they actually tie you up. That movie's so I feel like I could get out of this one so easily because this reminds me of Speak No Evil, too. It's like, how far can we go mm-hmm. with your kindness and hospitality before we completely manipulate you and take you over? It's like, yeah, OK, I would just be like, get out of my fucking house. I'm not giving you more eggs. Why'd you drop the fucking eggs, dumbass? Like, get out. Don't come yeah. back. I, like, this is this is the thing is like, it really is like how much of a pushover are you and i feel like i am a pushover unless it comes to you being in my space and like in my house like Mm -hmm. as soon as i asked you to ask you to leave and you don't i'm immediately fighting you like i'm fighting you get out of the house i asked you to (laughs) leave and you're not so i'm throwing hands that's yeah i'm a real pushover and i hate like conflict so it would I would be definitely one of these people that would be trapped. But in this situation, I don't remember. At what point do they get the gun? I, I can't remember like where it think, switches over to where I think they just they're have actually it. tied up. And I don't remember. No. Well, no, at first either. they're like beating them with golf clubs. So they're not. Um, yeah. It's not immediately the the gun, but. Yeah, I Bryce, really? Like if if there was two teenage boys or like early 20 boys hmm. who are like smaller than you by the way, you're a pretty big guy and you said, "Hey, I need you to get out of my house." And they didn't. You wouldn't just start like forcibly pushing them out. Hmm. And and they, and they suck killed your too. dog. They're super they annoying. They killed your dog already. Your dog's yeah, dead. I Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'd probably be more passive and just like call the police or something. I can't remember uh, if they tried that. Also, but I feel like men in these types of movies are always like the worst. Like uh, they just like watch their wife get like violated and they're just like not doing yeah, anything about it. Yeah, the husband's a pussy. 
Like, I, I would rather get shot in the face attempting to stop someone from touching my wife. You know, like, yeah, I don't understand why they just sit there the whole movie. Well, you say that, but I mean, life preservation is a thing. I That could be you true. Know? Yeah, it could be way different if you're actually in that situation. But like the anger I feel watching a husband sit there and like cower in fear while his wife is like getting felt up by this like teenage boy. It's like this, <laughs> there's something should be happening here. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Like I... I love that movie. As much as I'd like to say that I'd definitely be able to get out of it, like, I would be one of the guys that could be most likely to be trapped in this situation. The husband is crippled from the start, too. Like, pretty early on, he can't move. They stab him very quickly. But, no, I I wouldn't even take the, like, the, the first interaction when they ask for the eggs and then they drop all of them. Like, I'd be like, no, I don't have any more eggs. Get out. You shouldn't have dropped them stupid get out and i'm an yeah, asshole like, so well, it would be so like easy to uh yeah sounds like you need to go drive to the store asshole yeah, go to the store uh, get out of my fucking house i'm trying to make dinner like get out um yeah i think this, this is w- one of those movies where like david would have the superpower in this situation where he's the exact right person to be put into a situation like this where someone barely oversteps the bounds and then and he'd just be like no get the fuck out Who, wh- what are you doing i mean what that's how that? i am Wh- why are you why did you drop those eggs wh- what's going on who are you two like you they wouldn't be able to get by yeah at all um, i'm a little jealous of that <laughs> i think this one might be the hardest kind of but green room and you're not a nazi you're just one of the people mm. there oh, i think that one would be hard <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I can't relate. I don't know how I would act in that situation. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it's like not to be a Nazi. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Well, That's, according, you know. according to our reviews, we're either alt-right conservatives or liberal cucks. <laughs> like, there's no yeah, in-between. We get hated no for being between. both, and it makes no sense. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what our political stance is either, guys. Just figure it out. Just keep guessing. Um, keep guessing, but stop but, leaving one-star reviews with your guests because they're always wrong. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, what is that about? Um, but yeah, Green Room's pretty hard to me. I think this is hard. Like, because this is like not an impossible situation like Cube where it's like, I'm probably not going to get out of there. I don't know what's going on. This is like a, what the fuck? Like, what mm-hmm. the fuck am I going to do? Like, I'm trying to remember the situation. So they're in a room. Do they have the gun or is the gun outside the door? The gun's outside the door. Gun's outside the door. And and, and you're, someone gets killed immediately, right? Right. But you're blocked up. You can't leave. They're outside the door with the gun. I feel like there really is no good way to get out. Like, what would yeah, what could you do? Nothing, yeah, that's really. impressive that they did get out for the most part. Yeah, it's a good it's a good movie. It's scary. It's like shit. You're in you're just in a bad situation. Um, all right, let's just do the last two. Um, 14 to 8, you're John Cusack. What do you do? Jump out the window. I mean, this is like... <laughs> you don't go in the fucking room. That's what you do. You listen to Samuel L. Jackson. I would you get dive bomb out. out that window like a swan. <laughs> be like flying face first so fast to that concrete. <laughs> yeah, I think that's... I mean, you're not getting out unless the room wants you to get out of, basically. Yeah. Um, um yeah the last one i have is the first saw and you're either one of them you can be either one because they're both kind of in the same situation um i would not cut my foot off yeah i'm not cutting the foot yeah, off. i don't <laughs> think i could cut my I, don't, I couldn't cut up my foot off what was the what was the dilemma you could either cut your foot off or well that's they don't die. say was there anything else they don't say you can cut your foot off there is a key but it's gone immediately because um, it's in the tub that the right. brown haired guy um, pulls the plug on. And but right. that's because they weren't listening to the rules, which I mm. would listen to the rules if I was in a jigsaw puzzle. OK, uh, I would be yeah. listening to that. Recorder. I feel like they didn't try hard I mean, enough to the, like break the, the with pipes the... and stuff that they're attached to. Yeah. Yeah. If that's... I may. Um, Beg your pardon. I think one of the the main drawbacks of all these situations for me is 
I think I'd just welcome death in most of these circumstances mm-hmm. and be like, finally, finally the no. sweet embrace of death. <laughs> no more life, and it's not my of my doing. Nine saw traps Sounds out of like ten. A good deal to I'm me. just dying on purpose, like just yeah. giving in. Because like right. you can either hurt yourself a ton and maybe live, or just take the quick death. I'm just taking the quick death. I just death. think, I think that the first saw is like the least like there's the least amount of casualties. Like there was a step by step of what to do in the situation. They just obviously freaked out like anyone would and they didn't know what to do and they ran out of time and it just got fucked up. But like there are other saw traps, like the one Amanda originally got out of where she had to dig through that guy's stomach. Like I could not do that. The, this act, the actual main saw trap in the first saw is doable. They, as it as the series goes on, they get really fucking impossible. Like, and there's YouTube videos about them, and I love watching those. Being like, how to get out of every saw trap, and some of them are just like, you can't. <laughs> and but like this I one is the saw probably traps. the most doable. I love the saw traps where they are actively trying so hard and succeeding for the most part, and then they still die. It's like, what more could have you have done? You cut off all your fingers, and you're still dead. <laughs> Wait, did you guys see Saw Ten? Yeah. Last year? Um, yeah. I... We did a review on it, didn't we? Oh. You did a review on it with some guy. Yeah, not, not us. Oh, that's right. I was... That one was so frustrating because everyone in the end who has all, all the traps in the same room, they all did what they were supposed to do, but it just wasn't enough. Yeah. Because they, they, they had like 45 seconds to cut their brain open. That pissed mm-hmm. me off so bad because I was like, they are trying. They're trying so hard. That actually might be one of my favorite Saw movies just because they make they make John Kramer out to be like this hero. And it's so funny. Like I'm laughing out loud as he's like sacrificing himself for this little boy when he's the one who made the traps like he put them in that situation. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's so crazy. Um, But yeah, that was that was the trap game. That was fun. Woohoo. Yay. Thanks. That was fun. Um, this episode is produced by me, edited by me. Um, thank you to everyone listening. I don't think we have any new patrons. Um, we but had one new one in the last week, Ryan A, and he actually prepaid for the whole year, which, wow. you know, if you're thinking about becoming a patron, that might be the way to do it because you get a discount. On yeah. It. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. That's really cool. Um, yeah, um, make sure you share this podcast. Um, thank you to everyone. We love you so much. And love don't, you. don't forget to call 682-253-4468 so we can hear your lovely, lovely voices. All right. Bye. All right, bye. Good day, sir. Good day, sir. Is that Ringo? <laughs> 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 I just want to through the spreadly woods. He had no face! Horror! Wow, that didn't sound good.